Well, really, I'm thrilled to introduce Valerie Brachia, the former Deputy Director General for Policy and Planning of the Israel Ministry of Environmental Protection. She's a lecturer at the Porter School for Earth Sciences and Environment in Tel- at the Tel Aviv University and a research associate at the Jerusalem Institute for Policy Research. She initiated and established environmental planning in the land use planning system in Israel, something that we totally take for granted now, and introduced sustainability into governmental policy. She was a member of the National Board of Planning and Building and was head or member of the of Israeli delegations on environment to international negotiations and meetings, including during Israel's accession to the OECD, UNEP Governing Council, UNCSD, and the Mediterranean Action Plan into the bilateral and multilateral negotiations in the Middle East. And a dear friend, Valerie will talk about sustainable about um, sustainable lifestyles after COVID-19. The lecture will be in English, although I'm sure Valerie will be happy to answer questions in Hebrew uh, during or after the lecture. So Valerie, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you for the lovely introduction, uh, Deborah. Um, I'm very happy to join you. Um, I'm going to present to you a work that we are just issuing now. Um, it is actually a book that is going to be released on Friday, so this is very timely. Um, and I'm going to turn over to uh, share my slide, share my screen with you. Uh, so this this is a, a book we put together uh, for authors and myself in an international context which is uh, going to be published by Routledge and is uh, going to be released uh, Friday. And we looked at what was happening on COVID and how was it affecting lifestyles and whether we were going to see something more sustainable or less sustainable if we looked at the long-term societal implications. Um, The four authors, sorry, the four authors from all around the world Um, We got together in the context of an international network of practitioners and academics interested in sustainable consumption. Philip from from Boston, Fabian from Brazil, Lei from uh, China, from Beijing and myself. And uh, we we got together. uh, We were following what was happening around the world in our countries and what it was meaning, and what would be the result and the long-term implications. We weren't looking so much on the immediate health or the economic crisis. We were asking ourselves, what is going to happen in the in society in terms of uh, COVID-19? And, and it has been a disruption, and, and it wasn't so quick. Um, people at the beginning in 2020, we all started getting together in March, and it was at the beginning when it was in China, and we didn't realize what it was going to be all around the world. Um, and at first, people said, okay, it's just a little disruption, we'll get back to where we were very quickly. And that's not so. It is a disruption of routines. People adopted new routines, and barriers were broken down. Uh, which previously stopped us being able to do things. So although it brought a huge amount of misery and still uh, a very tragic circumstances, it actually is uh, creating opportunities for something else, maybe an experiment and a reevaluation of what we do and how we do and what government does. Uh, so is it was it normal? Where were we? We normal and sustainable. Were we in a sustainable normal lifestyle? Well, the answer probably from all of you and myself, if anybody had asked us, would be no. Normal was not at all sustainable. And actually, tomorrow is Earth Day. So if anybody's thinking how many Earths we're consuming tomorrow, they'll tell us um, what what our current situation is. But it's kind of three times. Um, the planet for a European uh, lifestyle. 
Um, so yes, we're, we were way beyond what was considered sustainable, nothing planetary boundaries and, uh, and losses, and it was not being solved by technology. So we were more and more realizing uh, that we were in unsustainable lifestyles. However, there were indications prior to the COVID that normal was actually indicating some sustainable trends, which we are possibly losing. And we should be aware that what COVID-19 has done is not necessarily just more sustainable. We may be losing what we did have, which was to some extent sustainable. Well, the urbanized population was a major issue and we were getting more and more urbanized. We were getting more and more activity within an urban area and uh, urbanity. We were progressing towards SDG goals with alleviating poverty and we went backwards. We were getting improvement in public transport and it dropped. Um, we were getting young people looking for experiences rather than material possessions. Uh, so we have some things which are going back. Now, what we do have is a very interesting uh, replacement of the physical by the digital. And I will uh, emphasize that one as we go through to see uh, what, in fact, is going to stay with us as we uh, look for the long term trends and what their implications may be. So as you see, we were looking at Brazil, China, Israel. We had New Zealand on board at the beginning, but if you calculate the time that you can speak together between uh, the US, Brazil, and uh, New Zealand, you can't speak to anybody. Uh, you can't speak to everybody at the same time. So New Zealand said, we're not getting up in the middle of the night to talk to you. And sadly, we lost New Zealand uh, from the group um, of researchers. And so we are US, Brazil, China, and Israel. And we were saying, what was happening? What are the social implications? What's going on? Well, the first one that was so strong, and we're now all aware of it, but it was China, our, our, our colleague Li in China, in Beijing, who said, I'm fine, we're all closed down, we're all in lockdown, but everything's online, I can get what I need. We, at the time, we didn't, the rest of us, realize just how significant uh, what she was saying would become to all of us uh, during the various periods of lockdown that we've all been going through. Um, but the economy, the, the delivery, uh, the ability uh, to do work, have everything uh, through internet connection, it was already very strong in China, and China is very online. If you look at the uh, uh, characteristics of China, they're a very online population. And, and as she put it, everything's available, it's online. Well, we asked ourselves, we can see habits are changing. Are they going to stay? Or um, are they going to be temporary? And, and, and will, it, will actually people go back to where they were before? Uh, and that's a question that we keep on asking ourselves as we see the uh, uh, trends evolve. And consumers, even in an Accenture survey, which was in March in 2020, started saying, um, no, our shopping habits are changing and we're going online. And they were already doing it and they were increasingly doing it as time went on. And we have already uh, seen it here, too. And people are not going back to normal. So it isn't a question of saying, oh, it was a temporary disruption. And we're going back to where we are. Uh, from what we can see from surveys, if it's Accenture, Gallup, uh, Ipsos, uh, Mori, and, and so on, uh, from market research around the world, people are not going back to normal. And that we are going to be adopting a different way of doing things in different aspects of our lives. And the question then is, what is going to be the new normal if people are not going to go back to the old normal. Um, if we look at recent uh, uh, material, and uh, for, for the purposes of the lecture, I didn't stay with what was in the book because we submitted the manuscript um, at the end of 2020. Uh, and uh, it's 
worthwhile also asking ourselves well, what is happening in 2021 and now with the rollout of vaccinations. Uh, and so I looked at some uh, more recent surveys and the Ipsos, which is the, uh, uh, a survey that uh, is in March uh, 2021, the 24th of their survey uh, waves. Uh, uh, and they asked again and again, uh, well, do you expect to go back to your previous routines or adopt new routines? And notice 36% plus 10%, 46% are saying we adopted something new. We are not going back to where we were. Uh, one of the most alarming and anti-sustainability trends, which is coming up again and again and again, is that people stopped using public transport. If there's one item which is of the greatest concern and however much environmentalist in, uh, or pointed out, oh, the, the climate change, the emissions have reduced. Uh, that was very temporary. But please note that public transport use, the drop, people are not necessarily expecting to go back to transit and public transport use. And there is a big increase in purchase of private cars. Uh, and that is extremely worrying. Um, another item we picked up, which is an interesting one, is how people are saving. That has an in, in interest in terms of consumer uh, activity because uh, uh, consumption has been going up directly with income levels. But if people are saving more and spending less, that has implications for the amount of consumer, um, perhaps material consumption levels. Um, uh, so we, we are looking at the same, the survey of March uh, 2021 uh, in uh, the US, uh, and they were saying, well, thinking ahead, um, are you going to do the same? Are you going to go back? Well, you can see that there are some things that people uh, do want to go back to. Um, they definitely want to go back to social activities. And one of the main e e e effects of the social distancing has been to make people feel that they've lost their social connectivity. And that is a very strong one. So people do want to get out and be with other people. Uh, you may uh, then ask, well, what is happening here? And uh, Google Community Mobility Reports, every few days, update and look at what has been happening uh, uh, in relevance to a baseline, and that baseline is prior to the COVID pandemic. So uh, this is on the 16th of April, which was the latest uh, date that I could pick up. Um, and you will see that the retail, transit, workplaces are all below the baseline. So you may rightly say, but it has gone up and down. We can see the variations, um, but it is not back to the baseline. It has not gone above the baseline. Whether you look at retail, transit, workplaces, and even the, whichever date you wish to check, and even at the time when we were already rolled out the vaccinations, we are below the baseline. Um, we are not going up, we are still below. Um, New York is even worse. Maybe you in Tel Aviv, I took, uh, in, perhaps it is the uh, uh, implications of being vaccinated and therefore we could get out and do more. New York is still much worse condition um, uh, than we are. Um, if you are asking what's happening post-vaccination, there is one report that I've picked up so far um, by IBM who called it an injection of hope um, and asking people, once you have the vaccine, what do you want to do? Uh, and as you'll see, people really want to go back to live sporting museums, amusement, theatre, want to go back to culture, want to go back, uh, to, go back to social uh, connectivity. Um, we were looking at trends, major changes. We were trying to find what is it 
that we can expect to see that changed and that may stay. Um, our colleague uh, Fabian Echeverre in Brazil, he was looking at the Latin American country, at the LATAM, and uh, he was trying to pick up um, which ways are we going and what are the debit dividends. And I'm going to pick those up now uh, in a more uh, specific way because they are influencing what we can expect to see uh, going forward and what will be the uh, trends that will influence the way we live. Um, and we were looking at 10 domains of practice. We were looking for lifestyles. We were looking at what will change in the way people live. And uh, we, we were picking up that trends were being accelerated or decelerated. In other words, they weren't necessarily something that was totally out of the blue. It was something that we could say happened before but what happened during the COVID-19 pandemic is that trends that uh, existed before, perhaps on a relatively limited small scale and were evolving over time, they suddenly accelerated forward at a very fast pace. And that was digitalization. And that in, 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 in those accelerated trends in the digitalization of the way we live our lifestyles, those are the ones which are definitely going to stay with us. We're not going back again. We're not going to lose the digital lifestyle. So if we're talking about the possibilities of remote working, which is a game changer, as we will look at in more detail, we're looking at online shopping, at online entertainment, at online education, at telemedicine. <coughs> it is a digitalization of the way we live which is now very significant in looking at our future lifestyles. We also saw in some countries, there was an acceleration of what uh, uh, Fabian uh, was called, uh, called mindful consumption. But there was connected to health, uh, an increase in ethical and environmental consumption. Whether that will stay or not stay, we're not sure, but there was an opportunity there uh, for an increase in, uh, in mindful consumption. Uh, remote working is a game changer. We will see in a moment how that Im has implications for the home, the neighborhood and the city. Uh, remote working was small before. Uh, there were countries which did go further. That's like in Finland, the Netherlands also was at 14%. But if you'll notice, Israel was at 4% remote working before uh, the pandemic, 4%, it was irrelevant. Well, San Francisco jumped to 89%, but, but the OECD estimate in, during 2020 was it's definitely going to be over 30%. Gallup says in March 2021, uh, there were uh, uh, definitely still up. Um, a, a preference for remote working and that 50% of the US workforce were working remote uh, 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 in March 2021. In other words, remote working is here to stay. The question is how it will stay. And then that is several different kind of models. It may be fully remote, but it may also be partial hybrid and work centers nearby in neighborhoods or mixture, living, working, meeting in neighborhoods or coming in or not coming in one day, two day, three day, that is still evolving as we see how remote working evolves, but it is in and it is here to stay. Um, there were trends that were decelerated and uh, one of particularly the ones that are so uh, uh, sad uh, that they have been decelerated in, are those related to the SDGs where we hope sustainable development goals of poverty, gender equality were moving forward before COVID and they've regressed considerably. Uh, so has recycling. So we've seen an enormous increase in the use of disposals and packages and we've landed up with the waste disposal issue um, which has uh, re uh, we, and, and issues which we hoped we were going uh, towards, uh, we're going back. Um, one of the items which we also started going back was on those relating to the sharing and the sharing economy. We 
hope that will pick up again, but because of the need to be separate, distanced, uh, all of the ideas of sharing and the sharing economy dropped. Some were trends which were totally unexpected. We didn't realize uh, that was where we were going to be. And the idea of being more con uh, concentrated on health, but the idea of home body, that is we live around our homes and that the homes became the central uh, focus of attention uh, and the idea of being uh, localized and living within a neighborhood and area became a trend uh, which were not necessarily there before. And one which had uh, come in from some countries is with the resurgence of state control and operation, citizens became more passive. Um, uh, Fabian in, in Brazil, he is our market research guy, he said um, we can look at it in terms of scenarios. We may get a combination of, uh, of social connectivity with a consumer and materialism. And we may land up, if we go back to normal, we will go back to consumer revenge. We can see a little bit of that happening now as people are coming out in Israel and, and going a bit for consumer revenge. Not sure how long that is going to last. It may be that we'll end up more being wireless materialists who are virtually connected and virtually um, uh, consumers, uh, but not necessarily um, in the social way uh, that it is now. We may land up with a little bit less. We may land up with being click rebels, which means that we'll stay socially unconnected and do everything through the internet. Uh, connectivity and not through social activity. Each of the directions is possible. It's a nice way of thinking about where are we likely to be going. Accenture looked at scenarios for the future and they said it is the younger population who are the opportunity for transformation and that they have reinvented themselves. The older population would like to go back to the lifestyle that they knew. Uh, so what are we seeing in terms of uh, trends that affect uh, the urban area, the, the way we live? Um, we were in a pre-corona area. We were revitalizing city centers. We had people outside. We had public transport. Uh, we had people, entertainment, outside street life, young people. Uh, we had a, an increasing urbanity. Corona stopped that. Corona sent us home. Corona stopped us being out on the streets. Corona put the restrictions on us. We're not, uh, we weren't gathering, we weren't in eating out, we weren't activity out. And young people lost jobs or lost their place and they went even some of them went home. Uh, we're so, then we saw trends perceived by the developers as what could what is happening in the role and the place of a property. And in housing, we were seeing uh, more a good connection to a private garden, a balcony. These became more important outside the house, outside the walls. People started looking for perhaps more space perhaps of facilities for remote working, and they were looking for perhaps places in the suburbs and out of town uh, 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 locations. In office, we were seeing people weren't going into the offices, they were working from home so that the offices didn't need such uh, headquarters space so that there was a reduced demand for office space. And offices perhaps are going to be rezoned and there's somewhere talk of rezoning office space for affordable housing. Um, so what are we seeing in terms of activities in their um, uh, homes and cities and neighborhoods? So homes will have to be multi-purpose, adaptable, flexible, enable different activities, different times at different uh, 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 in, in homes and in buildings with circulation systems and delivery services. What will happen in communities and neighborhoods? Much more local, 
much more of local activity, local business, local services, local communities, local institutions, perhaps local working places, and or maybe local organizational structures. And what will happen in cities as, as a whole, will cities become a collection of neighborhoods? And does this mean that neighborhoods will be the way in which cities are organized more and more in the future? What is the role of the central business district? Has it been weakened? And are we losing remote working population, which is a higher income, which is a high tech population? Are they going to say, well, we can work out. We don't need to be uh, close to the employer. We can work from home. We can work somewhere else and they'll go to a place which is a nice place to work and a different place to work. Um, one of the important I, things which has happened during the understanding that we're living digitally is that digital highways become more important than physical highways. Um, so we've got ideas like neighborhoods, like 15-minute cities, which have come in in Paris and in Hidalgo in Paris, the mayor of Paris. And, and we have, to have a, here a neighborhood activities like then neighborhood in Tel Aviv, which is not just a dwelling, it's activities around the neighborhood. So the neighborhoods have been, become much more important in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the way in which we see the post-COVID city. Uh, and that means we have a new kind of mobility. Uh, we, we have unsustainable trends in mobility where we've lost public transport um, and we've got an increase in private car. But there are some sustainable directions in neighborhood mobility, perhaps less commuting, decentralized, decentralization, cycling, micro mobility, and more place for people on the streets. Interestingly, it's well worth looking at what China did, and they uh, emphasized the role of local governments at a very localized level in a community grid management with each area broken down into community grids and with a grid members and with volunteers and they maintained that the local government in an urban community grid management was the key to how they managed uh, to uh, organize themselves uh, during their lockdowns and their uh, COVID uh, crisis. Um, so, so I'm going to bring to um, a close with a couple of slides saying, well, what will a post-COVID lifestyle be like? Will it be more sustainable or less sustainable? What are the kind of policies that we need in order to embed, to make the sustainable lifestyle uh, remain with us um, in a permanent way. So uh, first of all, we could say that there are some cases and there is a lower personal uh, consumption level as people lost incomes. Um, the most significant one is the digital um, uh, rather than the access of the physical and lower numbers maybe of journeys, flights, the increase in neighborhood services. And what we would like to see would be the governmental intervention, not for universal basic income, but for universal basic services. Um, however, what we are seeing is some, the red box is saying those are trends going in the wrong way. There are governments and around the world who are pushing and promoting for more personal expenditure to revive the economy more commuter and less public transport, larger homes because they want space for working, that's not necessarily going in a sustainable direction. So what do we want for policies for a new normal, but a new normal which is more sustainable? The first one is that everything, everybody should have access to broadband internet everywhere as a public service. Why is it that we provide a public service for roads, but we don't see broadband internet as a public service. Uh, encourage the remote working and even in the public sector because it gives an opportunity for people in peripheral areas to be remote working for people who otherwise would not be able to work. It may bring people with higher income to a more remote location with affordable housing. The separation of land uses between residential employment is irrelevant. 
this is a land use uh, regulation, which is a totally irrelevant today. Bring the residential into the centres to revive the centres, decentralise micro and add micro mobility to strengthen neighborhood community organization hopefully in that way if we went on policies like that and may i suggest that they could be relevant to a new government whenever we do get a new government um, and they are what we need in a sustainable lifestyle and i'll end my uh, words by saying that the green growth and green recovery, which is being used as a terminology in the EU, is not necessarily the direction that we need to go in. The greening is uh, um, perhaps adding an environmental element, uh, but uh, the, they are all on economic growth, economic recovery. That is the emphasis. They are getting more uh, subsidies into the economic growth and economic recovery and the greening is not the main line. We need policies for more sustainable lifestyles. Thank you very much. Val Valerie, it was fascinating. Let's, uh, um, first of all, before we have time for questions and discussions. So, um, let me know either by chat who would like to ask, and you can ask in Hebrew or in English. I'll start it out. I know that some of your former work was on the shared economy. And you've said a few things about it, but there are a lot of that shared economy that has almost disappeared now. Do you see it? Can you say a few words about it and, and, and what you think the future will bring? Yeah, I, I, I think we've lost that, um, th that direction at the moment. Um, we, we may get it back. I was, um, I, I was interested in the sharing economy because I saw it as a way towards a s more sustainable lifestyle. Mm. I saw it as mm. less materialistic. I saw it people as being willing uh, and um, uh, not wishing to acquire possessions, but interested in receiving a service. Um, not interested in showing off status symbols of material goods, but more interested in experiencing and exchanging and cooperating uh, through sharing uh, ideas, lifestyles, and so on. Uh, so I was enthusiastic and wanted to support that direction. The uh, social distancing imposed on us during uh, the COVID uh, pandemic sent a lot of those ideas backwards. And um, some of them remained, but a lot of the sharing economy ideas are either frozen or dropped. Yeah. Um, sharing goods between people is now people are too worried about it. Uh, sharing a car to get some place, sharing drive, sharing a mobility, sharing ways of going about things has lost its- uh, Maybe sharing uh, workspace, uh, like the WeWorks, maybe that- That dropped. Yeah, it dropped, dropped but that and might so it, come back up. I don't know. It might come back up, but on a different way. It might come back up in neighborhoods, in dispersed, digitalized, decentralized services in neighborhoods. And that is what uh, is being talked about. That you may not have people um, coming in to a central location like the CBD. Um, it will be people who will perhaps not necessarily have the place inside their homes, will go to a neighborhood location in order to uh, participate and to be uh, co-working, but um, it, it will perhaps have a dispersed, decentralized neighborhood um, uh, uh, structure rather than bringing people into large WeWork type of uh, locations, which lost clientele. Yeah. Okay, Shalom Bina has a comment and a question. Uh, 
אתה רוצה לשאול... כן, כן, אני אשאל. תשאל. סליחה שזה בעברית, אני מבין אנגלית מעולה, אבל כן, סבבה. מה שראיתי בפנדמיה, זה היה מאוד ברור אצל ילדים דווקא, מהיחס שהם מאוד שונאים ללכת לבית הספר, שפתאום מתגעגעים לבית הספר, והם רוצים כבר ללכת לבית הספר ולפגוש את החברים שלהם. ואני שואל, אולי זה מייצר תהליכים בטווח יותר ארוך? שקשה לראות את זה עכשיו, אנחנו ייקח לנו עוד הרבה שנים להבין בדיוק מה קרה פה, אבל, אבל אולי זה דווקא יצר, המגפה והריחוק החברתי יצר רעב לאנשים לשתף פעולה, יצר רעב לאנשים, הם יותר מעריכים את זה, לשתף פעולה בכל מיני דרכים, אז סתם שאלתי אם את חושבת על זה גם, ואיך לדעתך זה, איזה השפעות יהיו לזה בטווח הארוך. אפשר להמשיך את השאלה הזאת כדי שתעני ביחד, ולרי? בטח. טוב. בהמשך לאותה שאלה, אני גם חשבתי, כמובן, אנחנו עושים כל פעם תוך כדי, ויופי שעשיתם את העבודה המאוד מעניינת הזאת, אבל בסך הכל זה הרי די מוקדם להעריך מה... מה המגפה העולמית הזאת עשתה, גם במובן המקומי, גם במובן העולם, העולמי. ההתרשמות שלי, שוב בהמשך, הוא דיבר על ילדים מבית הספר, אני חושבת שיש הבדל מאוד גדול בין צעירים לבין היותר מבוגרים בנושאים האלה של צריכה. ואני מאמינה שהנטייה הגדולה יותר של צעירים לבקש שירות ולא בעלות על המוצר, היא משהו שיהיה לו תוקף גם בהמשך. גם אם זה יתעכב, וגם אנחנו עוד לא יודעים אם באמת הפנדמיה, יחד עם החיסונים, תסתיים תוך זמן לא רב, ההשפעה שלה תהיה אחרת מאשר אם זו רק התחלה. של כל מיני וריאנטים שייכנסו לחיים ויהפכו לחלוטין את הסדר למשך הרבה יותר זמן. אז לי נדמה שכמה מהדברים שגילינו לפני, בעיקר צעירים, הולכים לחזור, ולא למרות שהיה נדמה שהם נעלמים בזמן המגפה. דברייה, הדיגיטציה של החינוך לילדים היה כישלון. על זה לא חוזרים, ואין כוונה, אני חושבת, באף מקום בעולם לא רואים את זה כהצלחה. זה הייתה די כישלון לילדים. אני לא בטוחה שזה כישלון ל-higher education. Um, אני לימדתי בזום uh, לסטודנטים במשך השנה ויש יתרונות, uh, יתרונות וחיסרונות לדבר הזה אבל זה יכול בהחלט לשנות את ה-higher education שאפשר ללמוד מכל העולם לסטודנטים מכל מקום uh, ויש דרכים לעשות את זה יפה um, אבל אין ספק שה-social uh, connectivity הוא uh, נקודה קריטית ואנשים חיפשו איך לחזור לזה, אבל יש אלו שמצאו גם את ה-social connectivity גם בצורה דיגיטלית. קחו בחשבון את זמן הפנאי, קחו בחשבון את הבידור, קחו בחשבון שהייתה עלייה עצומה בנטפליקס וכל ה-home entertainment, וגם במערכות או באפס שנתנו קשר חברתי 
house party, אני לא ראיתי שכל כך תפסו פה בארץ, אבל house party לדוגמה הוא מאוד מרכזי בברזיל לקשר בין אנשים, ליצור משהו מעין חברתי באמצעות האפס או משחקים באמצעות אפס. אז היה לנו התפתחות עלייה עצומה של דרכים שונות דרך האינטרנט כדי ליצור ולהחזיק ולייצר דרכי קשר חברתי בין אנשים גם אם הריחוק החברתי מנע מאנשים להיות באופן פיזי ביחד. התפתח אפשרויות נוספות. זה לא מחליף, ואנשים התבטאו שמה שהם רוצים זה ה-social connectivity, זה לא מחליף, אבל זה בהחלט העלה חלופות נוספות לקשר חברתי מעבר לקשר הפיזי שהיה. Um, אני רוצה להתייחס לדברים של נעמי, דרך אגב אני ציטטתי מקורות שלך נעמי בספר, um, שדיברתי על, על, על מה קורה בארץ אז אני ראיתי אותך כמקור, um, אבל um, את העלית האם שירות ללא בעלות, את מקווה ואת חושבת שהתהליך הזאת בין צעירים הוא יתפוס בחזרה ואני רק יכולה להגיד שאני מקווה מאוד שאת צודקת ושזה נכון ושמה שראינו בתור ההפסקה או ההקפאה של התהליכים במשך הקורונה זה באמת יהיה מגמה זמנית ושנחזור לשירות ללא בעלות מבחינת sustainability זה הכיוון שרציתי להיות בו לא, אבל, אבל אני, אני חושבת שיש כיוונים שהם מאוד לא סוסטיינבול וצריך לראות איך המערכות של קבלת ההחלטות מתמודדות איתם ויכולים להמשיך את מה שכן יכולים להיות ולהחזיר לנו את הדברים של הכיוונים שהם נכונים ל-sustainable lifestyles, אבל להתמודד עם אלו שהם בכיוון השלילי. מעניין. עוד שאלות, הערות, מחשבות? לי הייתה איזו מחשבה, כל הזמן קוראים לזה social distancing, ומה שהיה צריך בשביל הקורונה היה physical distancing. ואולי באיזושהי צורה המונח הזה של social distancing יצר נזק שלא היה חייב להיווצר. אם היינו משכילים לשמור על ה-social connections עם physical distancing, יכול להיות שהיינו יכולים ליצור פה משהו חדש שהתפספס. ככה סתם מחשבה שהייתה לי. את מאה אחוז צודקת, מיכל, מאה אחוז צודקת. היה כמה מאמרים שאני ראיתי תוך כדי הכנת החומר, והם בדיוק תפסו את מה שאת, הכיוון שאת אומרת, שזה המונח social distancing הוא ממש מזיק, הוא לא נכון, ולא צריך להתייחס לזה בתור social distancing, אף אחד לא רוצה social distance, הדרישה של המערכת הייתה על ה-physical distance ולא על ה-social distance. מכיוון שנדמה לי שכולנו מסכימים עם האמירה הזאת, שזו הייתה פשוט ממש טעות, רק כשביטוי משתרש בציבור, כמעט אי אפשר להזיז אותו, למרות שהוא היה מאוד לא נכון אפילו, לא לא מדויק, לא נכון, ממש שגוי. אבל 
בדרך, מכיוון שזה, הכוונה לא הייתה, נוצרו כל הדברים החליפיים שאת דיברת עליהם, כדי לקשור קשר חברתי למרות המרחק, ונדמה לי שה... אני הולכת עם אלה שטוענים שהנורמלי החדש יהיה היברידי. לא, אפילו בבתי הספר, בוודאי בבית הספר התיכון, אבל אולי אפילו ב, ב, יותר בחטיבת ביניים, ב, ביסודי, יש בתי ספר שכן הצליחו, אני מכירה בית ספר שמאוד הצליח עם, ה, עם הנושא הזה, למרות שבדרך כלל זה לא הצליח בארץ, אבל אה, גם, גם במקומות שהצליחו או לא, גילו דרכים חדשות, גילו דרכים נוספות. Uh, אני לא יודעת, אנחנו צריכים הרי את בית הספר גם כבייביסיטר, לא רק uh, לכל הדברים האחרים. כך שבית ספר לא עומד להתבטל וירדו לחמישה ימים, חמישה ימים, אבל לא, 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 לא יהיה בלי בית ספר. אבל אפילו בתוך בית הספר ינצלו את, ה, את, את ההיברידי, בוודאי בכל הנושאים של השכלה גבוהה ושל קשר חברתי. לא, לא נוותר על זה. היום את שומעת שעומדים לעשות כנסים גם וגם. יהיה, יהיה כך, ויאפשרו גם לאנשים שרחוקים מדי מכדי להגיע, או מרצים אורחים, מי אומר שמוכרחים להביא את כולם פיזית, אם אפשר, אם באים בשביל הרצאה אחת. הדברים יהיו היברידיים, באיזה מידה היברידיים. מוקדם מלדעת, אבל זה לא יהיה או חוזרים או לא, אנחנו יודעים את זה בכלל מתגובות לסיכונים, שלמרות שהמושג רזיליאנס בא מכדור שחוזר למצב הקודם שלו, בחברה זה בדרך כלל לא כך, מגיעים למצב אחר, אנחנו מקווים שהאחר יהיה משופר, אבל אני משוכנעת שהוא יהיה היברידי, בלי לדעת עוד בינתיים איך יהיו היחסים בין הדברים. Yeah. Hi, um, it's a very, very interesting presentation, lots of food for thought. And um, I guess what comes to mind when you, when you map the positive changes and negative changes is, um, are we going to just let everything evolve or are we going to be uh, noticing the good things and preserving and encouraging them and noticing the bad things and um, mitigating them instead of just letting things be resilient, like Naomi said, of going back to how they were, but rather resilient, how to make them better. Um, so I, I said that I noticed that in our area, I live near Haifa, um, the pollution levels were at a very low of one to two while we were uh, staying home. And, and in the last week they went up to four and people are noticing sore eyes and feeling uncomfortable. So it made me think, who's noticing this and how are we making the decisions to, to, to maintain the benefits and not let things go back to their bad ways? Valerie? Yeah, I'd like to come in on that. And I uh, think, uh, Deborah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we need policy intervention here. Uh, It is not a question of hoping something good things will stay and the not good things will go away uh, by individual behavior or by um, how the market responds. And we need um, public policy intervention, government level, municipal level. We need to try to get policy makers, decision makers uh, to give in uh, embed the um, ongoing um, trends which we see as positive to embed them inside the structures, the infrastructures um, and the ways in which institutions operate in order that those good 
uh, directions will continue and, and we will lose them. Um, some of them are disruptive to what was happening before in the market, for example, and if a government intervenes and uh, they can enable us uh, to, um, uh, to promote the uh, uh, sustainable lifestyles and in, in the, in the municipalities uh, could pick up the opportunity to embed and promote in their infrastructure um, uh, uh, policies and investments. But if they do not, uh, and if they leave it to the market, uh, we will not necessarily uh, gain the benefits and uh, we may land up um, with uh, suffering from those trends which are going in the wrong direction. And the one I pointed out particularly uh, was uh, the private car replacing what we were getting with public transport. I'm extremely worried. Uh, that that is not going in the right direction because the government subsidies are um, going to subsidize the public transport for the loss in income that they suffered uh, by the loss of um, uh, passengers. But they are, um, I do not see them promoting uh, higher investment in public transport and transit. Uh, facilities and talking about bicycle lanes is great, lovely, I'm all for it, but that's not going to solve the problem. We are getting far too great an emphasis on private cars. So without public policy intervention in the right direction, we are going to lose the opportunity or the moment of change that the COVID uh, crisis gave us. Yeah. Uh, Dia Meet uh, wants to say a few things about higher education. Dia, to, to the Brie, you'll, you'll talk for yourself. One thing that's interesting is the class of students that are here have requested to remain online for summer semester. Okay, a deal merit la she doesn't have a microphone or a picture. Baskalag Bohai is Nachashibut Dolala Mikash Fizi. A Hada Funksi of the Hashubot Shell Universita Himosad Shiduchim Kachnif Kashim Sirim Ballet Tume Nyandomi. Um the Levant the relevanti the Milchad Batuari Shon. Okay, as that's a comment may a D. והיה מאוד מעניין שקיבלתי ממש מתקבלת בקשות מה... פה איתנו יש קבוצה של סטודנטים מתואר שני בהתמודדות עם מצבי חירום שהם לומדים שנה שלמה והשני סמסטרים הראשונים שלהם הם באמת בזום והקיץ יכול להיות פיזי ויש בקשות רבות להשאיר את זה מכוון. אז אם לסטודנטים יש משהו להגיד על זה, נשמח לשמוע גם עכשיו. כן, אני אשמח לציין משהו. כפיר. כן. יש, אין ספק שיש חסרונות לזום. שלא פוגשים פרונטלי את המרצה או את התלמידים, אבל עם זאת זה הופך את הלימודים להיות קלים יותר. לצורך העניין, אני עובד תוך כדי לימודים, והזום מאפשר לי לחסוך בערך שלוש שעות על כל יום לימודים, שאני מניח שהיו מתבזבזים על נסיעות, פקקים, והמרצים מאוד קשובים, וגם ראשת החוג. ככה שזה בהחלט הופך להיות קל יותר. יש יתרון עצום לזום בעיניי. אוקיי, מדובר באמת על תואר שני. שעדי באמת התכוונה יותר לתואר ראשון. אותו כנ"ל. יש כל מיני, לא, יש כל מיני הזדמנויות גם במכוון, ללא ספק. אבל זה כזה שאנשים לומדים, לא עלינו, מבתי סוהר, וזה צולח, זה מצליח, או ממקומות מרוחקים. עכשיו המערכת פשוט הרבה יותר פתוחה לזה, וזה באמת הופך את הכל ליותר נגיש וגלובלי. כן. 
נכון. יש עוד שאלות, מחשבות? Can I ask a question? Sure. I would like to ask a question to Nomi and to you. Um, I, uh, I think there is a huge opportunity that remote working enables young people with high income potential to look for affordable housing and good quality living in more remote peripheral locations. So if we are talking today about the North, the South, Kiduma Gadlil, Kiduma Negev, that is the North. If there are broadband, if there are good people, זאת ההזדמנות שמצפה הרמון, רימון או כל מקום יבואו ולהגיד בואו אלינו, יש לנו affordable housing, יש לנו אפשרות זה digital highway, יש לנו איכות סביבה ואיכות חיים, בואו לגור אצלנו, אתם לא צריכים להיות במרכז הארץ. מה אתם חושבים? אני חושבת שזה רעיון נכון, ואני יודעת אפילו על יישוב אחד בצפון שכבר מנסה לעבוד, קריית שמונה, מנסים כן. לעבוד בדיוק על הרעיון הזה, לנסות למשוך בעיקר אוכלוסייה צעירה, חסרה להם אוכלוסייה, להגיד את הדברים האלה, בואו אלינו, יש לנו נופים פנטסטיים, יש לנו אה, אה, דיור חדש, ויש שם עכשיו שכונות חדשות אה, באיכות טובה. יש גם תעסוקה בסביבה, אבל זה לא מוכרח להיות, אתם יכולים להמשיך לעבוד מרחוק. אנחנו עובדים על תשתיות, הנושא של... אתמול היה ערב עיון אה, במרכז לחקר העיר והאזור בטכניון, שעסק בתשתיות בפריפריה. אה, גם בכל מיני מובנים, אבל הנושא הזה של פס רחב ואפשרות לעבוד מרחוק, אוקיי, יום בשבוע, בדרך כלל לא מדברים על 100% עבודה מרחוק. מדברים על יום או יומיים בשבוע כן לבוא אל המשרד, אבל זה משהו אחר לגמרי, לבוא כל יום מאשר לנסוע פעם אחת וליהנות כל השבוע ממה שיכול להציע אזור כפרי, מה גם ש... בתים קטנים וירק ונוף, שוב, זה דברים שהיום מאוד מבקשים אותם, ודאי שיש אותם בפריפריה יותר מאשר במרכז. מה, מה זה אומר על רכב פרטי? זה אומר שימשיכו להיות עם רכב פרטי, מפני שגם אם את לא הולכת כל יום לעבודה, עדיין את זקוקה לרכב פרטי כשאת גרה לא במרכז עיר גדולה. אז, אבל לא תהיה הנסיעה היומיומית הזאת, שהיא עיקר הגודש ועיקר הפקקים קשורים בעיקר במקומות עבודה, זה יכול להפחית, בוודאי גם עומד להפחית. אנחנו רואים כל כך הרבה חברות שאומרות, עכשיו הולך להיות ניסוי עם כל השירות הציבורי. השבוע הציעו לכל השירות הציבורי, זה וולונטרי בינתיים, זה בגדר ניסוי לחצי שנה הבאה, אבל אם אפילו בשירות הציבורי הם הגיעו לזה, שמטעמים הן של חיסכון והן של יעילות ופריון, כדי להשיג אפילו יותר פריון, הם מציעים, לא לכל המקצועות, אבל להרבה מאוד מהמקצועות בשירות הציבורי, להתחיל לעבוד מרחוק. כן, זה יעבוד, וכבר... התחיל לעבוד בגלל מחירי הדיור המאוד עולים, וזה נושא לחוד, למה הם עולים כל כך והם יעלו עוד יותר. במרכז זה מוביל בדיוק למה שאת אומרת. אני חושבת שאפילו הנטייה, ואם, באמת, אם, כמו שאת אומרת, הממשלה תנצל את ההזדמנות ו, ותחזק את התשתיות בפריפריה, יש לזה סיכוי מאוד טוב. וצריך לקוות שהמחירים בפריפריה לא ימשיכו לעלות. שזה... אם יהיה יותר ביקוש, הם ימשיכו. כן, yes, זו בעיה אחת, ואני מסכימה עם, עם מה שנעמי אומרת במאה אחוז, מה שמאוד הפתיע אותי אתמול, זה שלהגיע מהצפ... מהצפון, או 
לתל אביב, שבדרך כלל זה לוקח שעה ורבע, לקח שעתיים ורבע. אז עם כל המשאלות האלה, יש דאגה, יש מקום פה לדאגה. הפריפריה מתרחק באיזשהו, הוא מתקרב מבחינת האופציות של עבודה מרחוק, החוסר תשתיות מאוד מורגש בתחבורה ציבורית. אנשים עדיין מפחדים לנסוע בתחבורה ציבורית. כן, כן, כן. זה לא, לא, לא החוסר בתחבורה ציבורית, החשש של אנשים מנסיעה, ו- ואיך שהוא בין ביקוש, את לא יכולה לבקש שירחיבו כן. בלי סוף, כש- כשהאוטובוסים והרכבות נוסעים ריקים. כן. עם כל הכאב. זה... כן, כן, כן. אז זה אני, אני רוצה ל... ל- לענות על נקודה אחרת שנעמי העלתה, היא אמרה, אנחנו כתבנו את הספר בעצם מוקדם מדי שבעצם לא יודעים בבירור מה קורה, וזה מאוד נכון, אנחנו לקחנו סיכון גבוה ואנחנו אמרנו, יש מקום להתחיל להעלות את הנושאים לדיון כי אם לא נעלה אותם, מקבלי החלטות יתחילו ללכת על קווי מדיניות כאלו או אחרים בלי להיות ערים, בלי לקחת בחשבון כי מקבלי החלטות הם לא מחכים עד שחוקרים באו בעוד כמה שנים עם היסטוריה ועם נתונים mm. שאפשר להתבסס עליהם, אז כן, יש בפירוש סיכון שמה שאנחנו התבססנו עליו ישתנה ודברים שחשבנו יוביל לכיוון אחד, הם יובילו בכיוון אחר. אז יחד עם הספר אנחנו עכשיו מנסים uh, להקים uh, אתר אינטרנט uh, שנמשיך uh, לעבוד ביחד ונגייס עוד אנשים uh, uh, לעבוד יחד איתנו, uh, לא, uh, להמשיך לעקוב, להוסיף עוד מידע עדכני, uh, לבקר מחדש, to revisit the scenarios או המגמות ולבדוק אם אכן זה מה שקורה, אז במקום רק להוציא ספר בנקודת זמן מסוים, וזה היה תאריך שההוצאה לאור אמרו לנו, תכינו, תגישו עד סוף 2020 כדי לפרסם אותו, אבל אנחנו מקווים להמשיך את המעקב ולהמשיך את ההתייחסות ולהמשיך את ההתלבטות ולהמשיך את ה... נוסעים באמצעות אתר אינטרנט פעיל ואם אתם, אם יש סטודנטים, אם אתם מתעניינים ורוצים להצטרף באיזושהי צורה ומתעניינים בכיוונים האלו, אנחנו יותר מנשמח להמשך הדרך שתהיו פעילים יחד איתנו זה יעבוד במסגרת סקוריי, הנטוורק הבינלאומית של חוקרים ל-Sustainable Consumption. אני אשמח להודיע לדבר במידה שהאתר יעלה לאינטרנט. מצוין, רעיון נהדר, והספר יהיה באמזון? זאת אומרת... אני מתאר לעצמי שכן, אבל אני יודעת שרוטליג' הודיעו שהם ריליסה, רוטליג' או ריליסינג את פריידי, שלישי. זה נמצא באתר של רוטליג', הם כותבים את זה וכל אחד יכול להעסיק אותו שם, אבל זה לא יימסר להם עד אחרי... יום שישי זה יתחיל להימסר. המון המון תודות, מרתק, מחכה לקרוא את הספר, ונשמח לדעת לגבי האינטרנט. 
אוקיי, שמחתי להשתתף, תודה רבה על ההזמנה. תודה לכולם, להתראות. רעיון נהדר ההמשך הזה, להתראות. תודה רבה.